I am sharing three savory recipes that all start with a can of pumpkin. Let's get cooking. first recipe is for creamy slow cooker pumpkin soup with rosemary. It may take the longest, but it is the simplest. Like we are literally just throwing things in this pot. We're setting it and we're walking away and we're doing whatever we want to do. You do need at least a six quart slow cooker. Only prep that we have to do for this recipe is just to chop an onion. I have half of a large onion. If your onion is more of like a medium to small size, go ahead and use the whole onion. And we are just going to give it a really rough dice. You don't need to be perfect with your knife skills at all. Once it's cooked, we're actually going to blend everything together. So everything's gonna get blended anyway. We just need the onion to kind of cook down, get nice and soft, and just flavor the whole soup. That's just gonna go in the bottom of the pot. Of course, we have to add pumpkin. So I am using two cans of 100% pure pumpkin. These are two 15 ounce cans. Just make sure you get 100% pure pumpkin and not pumpkin pie mix. And what I love about pumpkin is it's really high in vitamin A. And if you saw my video on acne and skin health, you know how important vitamin A is in the diet and it's a superfood when it comes to vitamin A. It also has a lot of vitamin C, a lot of B vitamins. It's also high in fiber and it has a lot of water content. So you're actually only getting 50 calories for a half a cup of pumpkin. That's awesome. So you're getting like those really good slow, fiber filled carbohydrates from the pumpkin as well as tons of nutrients. So it's definitely a nutrient dense superfood to me and something I try to use as much as I can in the fall and the winter. We are adding one 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes with their juices and all. Now we need two cups of either chicken broth or vegetable broth. Now we just need to add our spices. Using one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of dry oregano, and then a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Pumpkin and cinnamon mm, go so good. And we're not adding any sweetener to this, but the cinnamon will just like give this like little kick of sweetness, this little extra, mm, and it's just a quarter teaspoon. So you hardly notice it, but it definitely makes a difference. It's gonna kind of help the slow cooker out by stirring it up a little bit, making sure all the pumpkin is incorporated and the broth is incorporated. This is gonna cook on high for four to six hours or on low for six to eight hours. When this is done cooking, I'll show you my secret ingredient that I use to make it nice and thick and creamy and luscious without adding any dairy. Let's go ahead and finish my creamy pumpkin soup with rosemary. It is now done in the slow cooker, so it's been cooking for four hours on high. So I'm ready to finish it off with two more ingredients. So to make it nice and creamy and bump up the fiber, bump up the protein, we are going to use one can of cannellini beans or one can of white beans. And I've just rinsed and drained them already because you don't want to add the bean liquid from the can into the soup. Also got my rosemary spray here. Peel all the leaves off. I'm gonna chop them up. You need about two tablespoons and we're going to add that in after we blend the soup with an immersion blender. So this is one of my favorite kitchen tools to have on hand, especially in the fall and the winter when I'm making a lot of soups and it's great for making salad dressings. So it's so nice because then I don't have to throw things into the blender, especially really hot soup. I'm just gonna take this and basically puree the soup and it's gonna be nice and creamy and yummy. Let's give this a taste just to check for seasoning. That rosemary when it hits the hot soup. Mm. Okay. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Ooh, that is good. Really great things to garnish this would be like a drizzle of olive oil, additional rosemary or parsley. You could do red pepper flakes or some cracked black pepper. Now it's time to get started on my fast pumpkin curry with shrimp. I love this dish for a super, super fast weeknight. You guys already know I'm obsessed with using things from the freezer to make for a really delicious and healthy weeknight meal. This recipe does not disappoint when it comes to fast, quick, and healthy. Starting with one tablespoon of avocado oil in my nonstick ceramic pan. It's over medium heat. Use this yellow curry mix from Mike's Organic. This is their yellow Thai curry paste. 
I think the ingredient list on this is probably the best ingredient list I've ever seen on a curry paste. That is gonna go right in with the avocado oil and we're just gonna let it kind of fry up for a little bit for like two to three minutes. It's gonna sizzle when I have it hit the pan and that's just gonna release all the aromas and flavors. I first made this for Jack. I was a little nervous because I didn't know if he would like the flavors of curry but he was obsessed. I didn't even tell him it was curry. He was just like, oh my gosh, this is so good. It's not super spicy. It's just really warming, like for a fall or a winter weeknight dinner. I use a spoon to kind of mix up the curry paste and get it going and frying in the avocado oil. We need to add one can of light coconut milk. That is gonna make it nice and silky, make sure that we're feeling full from this dish and satisfied. In goes our can of light coconut milk. Now we can add our pumpkin. I actually don't need the whole can for this recipe. We just need one cup. So I'm gonna measure out one cup of my pumpkin. And in one standard size can, you get about a cup and a half, I would say. It's like a little more or a little less than a cup and a half. So what I love to do with any leftover pumpkin is put it in a smoothie. I love to make one of my protein morning smoothies into like a pumpkin pie spice smoothie. I'll also feed it to the dog. So I'll put like spoonfuls of pumpkin on top of their breakfast or their dinner and they love it. That's just gonna go right into our coconut milk and curry mixture. It's just gonna add a really nice sweetness to this curry. The spices are a little bit spicy. The pumpkin is just gonna like sweeten it, mellow it out. Oh, it's gonna taste so good. I'm going to add one 12 ounce bag of stir fry vegetable mix. A blend of broccoli, carrots, sugar snap peas, and water chestnut. Any type of vegetable blend, like all your favorite vegetables, you could use all broccoli, you could use peas, you could use green beans, whatever you like. I just like this mix of lots of different veggies. I love the water chestnuts. Oh, they're so crunchy and yummy. To do that, since the vegetables aren't seasoned, I am going to add half a teaspoon of salt. Our protein, we are using frozen shrimp. I like to choose a wild caught large shrimp if you can find it. So I find it at my local Kroger and you just need six to eight ounces of shrimp. Of course you can do more or less depending on how many people you're serving. I'm gonna boil the frozen shrimp so that they cook. I don't wanna actually cook the frozen shrimp in with the curry. Frozen shrimp give off so much liquid, it would really water down the curry. So I like to do it separately. I'm just gonna go ahead and add my frozen shrimp right into the hot water. And it only takes them like four to five minutes to cook. You just want to check them to make sure that they're opaque throughout and completely tender and cooked. to transfer it over here. You can eat this curry many ways. You can enjoy it as is, kind of like soup style. You can put it over rice or cauliflower rice. I have a recipe for cauliflower rice that I'll link below. You could also use something like shirataki noodles or rice noodles or regular noodles, whatever you like. I am going to go ahead and take a little taste just to make sure the seasoning's right. Oh, and it's nice and creamy and thick from that pumpkin. Oh, 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 that is so good. Oh my gosh. Woo! It just warms you up so much from the inside out. I love it so much. My last recipe is a creamy pumpkin pasta with peas. We need to start with our pasta. I love to use a gluten-free pasta or at the very least a whole grain pasta or what I'm using today is a grain-free pasta made from cassava flour. So you're actually gonna get a little bit more fiber, a little bit less carbohydrate, um, and it's just a really great option. I love this brand, Jovial. They make really, really great regular pasta and gluten-free pasta. Using a penne-shaped pasta, you could use rotini, macaroni, whatever you like. So I've got my water boiling. So I'm just going to go ahead and add eight ounces of pasta to my boiling water. And I'm just going to cook based on the package directions. Always add a little bit of salt to your pasta water. While the pasta is cooking, we can make our creamy pumpkin sauce. Of course, one can of pumpkin. I'm using one 15 ounce can of pure pumpkin really great play on like a mac and cheese because the sauce is like an orange kind of golden color like a typical macaroni and cheese but we are of course doing it dairy free and bumping up the nutrition with the pumpkin a quarter cup of coconut milk i'm using a full fat coconut milk for this recipe but you can use light 
regular, whatever you like. We just need something creamy, something um, with fat in it to give you that silky like mouth feel that you get from like a traditional mac and cheese. The pumpkin is very low in fat, hardly any fat at all. So we do need to add some type of fat to the sauce. In addition to the coconut milk, we're gonna add about two tablespoons of tahini. Tahini is just raw sesame seed paste. And I love it as a replacement for any type of nut butter. My younger sister has a nut allergy, so I'm always thinking of ways that I can use seeds rather than nuts. Um, but of course you could use like cashew butter. That's a really nice mild flavored butter that you could use. And this is what is gonna give us our salty, cheesy flavor. We need a third of a cup of nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is something I used probably daily for the few years that I was completely plant-based. I still love it. I still use it very frequently. It's low in sodium and really high in B vitamins. It just has this lovely, salty, cheesy, nutty flavor that goes so well in dishes like this where you're trying to keep it dairy-free and really bump up the nutrition. So a third of a cup of nutritional yeast going right in, a teaspoon of salt, half of a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Some cracked black pepper. Because the sauce is really thick, what we need to do to kind of thin it out, get all the ingredients to kind of incorporate together, I'm gonna pull a half a cup of the boiling pasta water out and put it into the sauce. Just about a half a cup. You don't even have to blend this sauce. We can just whisk it together. So no need to get a blender dirty. At the end of the cooking time for the pasta, I'm going to add one cup of frozen peas. I love to add something green to, to a recipe. So you could use your favorite vegetable. I like to play on like pumpkin pasta with peas. So like all the peas. You use broccoli, green beans. So that is how easy our creamy pumpkin sauce was. Pasta is almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and add the peas. Since we're using frozen peas, they're gonna cook so fast. They're just gonna thaw right in with the boiling water. Drained my pasta and my peas and added them right back into the hot pot. Now we're going to add in our sauce. You could certainly add a protein to this pasta dish. You could serve it either on the side or in with the pasta. Something like chicken would be really nice or a piece of salmon on the side. I like adding it right back into the hot pot there's still a little bit of pasta water in there and the hot pot heats the sauce through and so you're pretty much ready to serve. I'm so excited for this. I want pasta, I want a pea, I want lots of sauce. Mm. It's so creamy, really savory from the onion powder and the garlic. You can make it as salty as you like to. You could add a little bit more salt. You could actually sprinkle on a little bit of nutritional yeast over the top, just kind of like how you would do like with Parmesan cheese. I love doing that. You could add red pepper flakes. You could add more pepper to kind of spice it up. So many different things you can do with this pasta. Oh, that is so, so good. It's so creamy. Another easy, super weeknight meal that's packed with the nutrition from pumpkin. Make sure you check the description down below for all the links to the recipes so you can pin them for later and the actual written out recipes. I'll leave a link to my Amazon shop where I have in categories all of my favorite favorite food and kitchen utensils. Comment down below and let me know which recipe is your favorite and which one you wanna try first. Like this video if you wanna see more recipes like this. Just subscribe if you haven't already and tick the bell so you get notified when I upload new recipe videos. I will see you soon for another one. Bye.